Hey guys, so we're inside. It's the morning after a night uh, trying to spin it out imaging last night. Things got started off okay. The uh, slid over to the first target and focused, but when I slid over to the second target and tried to adjust focus, the focuser would not uh, work uh, in the sense that uh, there was no apparent uh, improvement in the focus. And as I went to uh, astrophotography tool, this is what I would see on the screen. You'll notice these buttons here. If I try to adjust it by a step of 50, it kind of locks up because it isn't actually moving the focuser. And so I have to stop it. Now, as I do that, nothing in fact has changed over here on the focuser. For example, uh, you would expect this part of the focus motor to turn, to rotate, and though you may not be able to see it, probably cannot see it in here. Um, so down inside the uh, focuser here is a uh, Phillips head screw that is attached to the OTA. And so it should rotate uh, with the outside marking of the focus motor itself when the focuser is operating normally. So ideally, if there is, if the motor is operating and turning and the uh, outside of the focuser itself is, is moving, then this should rotate, the screw should rotate as well. Now this is on the pivot here, so it should just simply rotate underneath me. But however, the motor is not turning. So either I've got some binding inside the, uh, the axis, the shaft, or uh, there's just a problem with the focus motor itself. So I'm going to have to go in and try to disengage the plastic sleeve that in effect is a, is a grip between the OTA focuser shaft and the inner surface of this motor here. And there's a set screw that you bring in and clamp that plastic piece onto the uh, shaft. There's also another set screw that connects the uh, focus motor itself to the plastic part. All right, so there's two connections there. Both seem to be connected. So I guess the next step is to remove the motor and see if we can get this to work. All right, so I have the focuser disconnected, so it's unpowered, which means I should be able to use this wrench here to rotate this symbol in front of the arrow here. So that, that will give me access to the uh, screws that I need to adjust in order to disengage the shaft from the OTA. So first thing we're going to try to do is rotate this around, which will be telling it in and of itself if it can't rotate. Now there's, it does not want to rotate. Notice, well, it's difficult to see here, but as I try to move this back and forth, there is some slight movement of the uh, base element here that's screwed into the back of the OTA. So it does not want to move. So that's certainly suggesting we have a some sort of a binding problem and maybe off axis rotation in the focuser relative to the axis of the OTA shaft. And so I guess the next step uh, somehow is going to be try to remove this thing. Um, that's going to be difficult if I can't get access to the screws. So Okay, so I was able to finally to get the focuser detached from its mounting bracket. It turns out, while I was unable to use the wrench to turn the, um, the shaft in order to uh, gain better access to the, to the uh, set screws here and here, uh, they were still visible on the other side, so I was able to gain access, which means I could loosen this part from this part, and then by... Uh, removing or untightening these two screws. These are the only two screws that hold the focuser to the bracket. The bracket in turn is held to the OTA through three uh, very small, probably M4 type screws that go in through this part here that comes with the the uh, the focuser. Now, when you first without the uh, before you get that, you have this piece here, which is. Uh, attached to those same three screws to the OTA. And then you have the knob, which is just a rubber part that slides on top of the shaft here for, for easy hand control, good grip. Uh, you just pry that off, you remove the three screws, save them because you use them later. 
And this turns out to be one of my uh, issues with this, uh, this design. So this part here, the original part that comes with the OTA, uh, this is just a cosmetic cover plate. It has no structural role whatsoever. And the th three screws that attach it to the OTA are perfectly adequate for that. They're, they have a, a countersunk head and a very few number of threads that go into an aluminum part just behind here. Um, and that's fine because this doesn't have any force attached to it, doesn't resist any force at all. The, uh, the issue that I have is that the focuser uh, which is perfectly fine, by the way. The focuser is a is a seems like a good piece of equipment, well designed, etc., and does work. The problem is that in the uh, attachment of of the focuser to the OTA, you remove the three screws that hold this part on, and then you uh, put in this new part that comes with the focuser, which seems to be a little bit thicker than this part, which means there are just of the few threads that you had available with these small small screws. Now you're subtracting off another one or two of those threads and then what i found in my particular part that's in the ota here there are three threaded holes in an aluminum part however in my case there are, there are two sets of three threaded holes and the reason there are two sets is it looks like one of the three holes in one set uh, had been stripped and so what they did during manufacture is just rotate the part over and drill three new holes which is perfectly okay the problem is that in the hole that corresponds to this screw location here, one of the top one or two threads are actually damaged. And so now if you take a thicker part, combine it with a small screw, combine with the first two threads in the OTA plate that you're threading into, uh, you have very few actual threads connecting uh, this part to the uh, OTA. And now this part has a structural role. So these, these screws, these little screws that were only holding on this cosmetic component are now holding on a structural component. There's two screws here that screw in here and here. And then the shaft is attached through this component here and two set screws here to grip onto this. What I was finding when I finally got this off is that this part could move ever so slightly, which means that this part would move ever so slightly relative to this, which means that the axis of rotation applied by the, by the motor here is off axis of the axis of rotation of the focuser. And so it was binding up. It couldn't, I couldn't undo it. And I have to remove this to get to this screw to retighten things. So it's a little bit tight now, but if I put this back on, this focuser is going to, through its the normal movement of, of tightening, of rotating the focuser this way and that way, it's going to eventually work this screw loose again, and I'll be in the same boat. So this taking the focuser off and putting it back on is going to be a regular thing, and I need to come up with a way to fix that. One option is to find out what kind of screws these are. Like I say, it's possibly an M4 type thread based on the clearance hole in this part here. Uh, and then maybe find one that's a little bit longer, uh, so that I can get down into the good threads of that little aluminum piece. So that's one option. The other option uh, is to get some Loctite and put that on these screws so that uh, I can get just a little bit of extra resistance and uh, maybe some insurance that as I, as I torque the focuser back and forth, it doesn't work this screw loose and it might, that might work. So that might ultimately be what I do. But uh, what I have found and I've got this hooked up through APT. So I'm plugged in, it's powered to the USB port. There's the uh, red light here indicating that it is powered. I've got the uh, APT set up for a 20 step move. Watch this part here and how far it moves when I apply 20 steps. Okay, there's very little movement, okay, for 20 steps. Now going back the other way, 20 steps, backlash compensation is turned on. It moved. Okay. So it is working. The motor is working. That's good news. Um, this motion here is the backlash that we're talking about. And that range of motion is about the 20 or so steps that I have identified as being the backlash for this focuser. So that's consistent with the, with what I'm seeing in the, in, in using the focuser when it's, a, when it's a, actually in place and working. Now, I've got a one good night left here, possibly of imaging. I don't want to take the chance of attaching this back on 
and running the risk that uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to loosen this screw again and get some binding and then ruin my, my night of imaging. So I'm going to take the scope out as is. I may uh, slip on the, uh, a little bit, uh, slip on the, the handle here so that I can uh, do some manual focusing, but I won't rely on, on this focuser tonight. And I'll contact uh, Celestron with uh, some questions I have about these screws and uh, what any ideas they might have uh, for for getting a better engagement in here but I guess if I have one complaint about the focuser and it technically it's not really about the focuser it's that we are now using what were three screws that were intended for a cosmetic part here we are now transferring load through that and not only that but it's a it's a force that that applies a lateral force this way and then back this way and back this way. So if you don't have good thread engagement with these three screws into the part behind, they are going to work loose. And if they work loose, you get off center. If you get off center, you bind up and now your focuser doesn't work. So that's a potential issue for those of you thinking about buying uh, a focuser. Again, that's a good part. But when you take, when you, the first thing I would do, and maybe even before you buy the part, buy the uh, focuser, is take off this cosmetic part take out the screws and take a very close look with a magnifying glass at the quality of the threads that remain in that part behind. And if the threads look like they're in really good shape, go ahead, order the focuser and you'll probably be good. If they're not in good shape, if there's uh, some damage to the top one or two threads, then that's probably a little bit of a warning sign. And you might want to go ahead and take time to try to figure out what those those uh, what the thread is on these screws and then get maybe slightly longer screws if possible to uh, to attach this part uh, to your OTA because that's going to be the the uh, the fixity of this part relative to the OTA is what's going to make the focuser allow the focuser to work.